Hey everyone, I'm Rambod, and this is part 4 of our Unreal Engine AI series. If you've been following along, you already know how to set up basic AI, give your enemy working sight, and get them patrolling and chasing the player using nothing but blueprints. But today, we're taking your AI to the next level. In this chapter, we're going to build a complete distraction system, step by step. You'll learn how to create a throwable object that makes noise, how to set up 3D audio in Unreal, and most importantly, how to make your enemy AI actually hear sounds and react in real time. By the end of this episode, your guards won't just see the player, they'll be able to hear suspicious noises, investigate them, and then forget about it if nothing turns up. This opens the door for all kinds of stealth gameplay, distractions, and smarter enemy reactions. Let's jump in and make our AI way more interesting. All right, let's kick off our distraction system by making a simple object we can throw to create noise for our AI. Unreal Engine's built-in modeling tools make this easy. No need to import any outside assets at this point. First, let's stay organized. Open your content drawer, right click, and create a new folder. Call it 3D models and head inside that folder so all our custom meshes will end up in one place. Now, jump back to your main viewport. Make sure you're in your third person level or whichever level you want to use for testing. At the top left, change the mode from selection to modeling. You'll find this in the toolbar or you can just hit shift plus five as a shortcut. On the left panel at the bottom, you'll see the modeling mode quick settings section. Find the drop down labeled new asset location and change it to current folder. This way, any model we make is saved directly into the 3D models folder we just created. Next, let's actually make our distraction object. In the modeling panel, select sphere. Set the radius to 10 or adjust to whatever size feels right for your distraction ball. If you want, you can also assign a material here to give it a unique look. Once you're happy with the settings, click Accept at the bottom to generate your sphere. Now if you check your content drawer, inside the 3D Models folder you'll see a new mesh, usually named something like Sphere, followed by a random code. To keep things tidy, right-click it and rename it to something like My Sphere. But before we use this mesh, we need to make sure it'll interact correctly with physics and other objects. Double-click your sphere mesh to open it in the Static Mesh Editor. At the top, look for the collision drop down in the ribbon bar and select Add Sphere Simplified Collision. This step is crucial. Without proper collision, our ball won't work with physics or trigger overlaps in the game. Now that we've got our distraction ball set up, let's make it so the player can actually throw it. We'll start by creating a new input action and then bind it to a key so it works in game. First, open your content drawer and head into the input folder. Inside there, open the actions folder. This is where we keep all our custom gameplay actions. Right click anywhere in the actions folder, go down to input in the menu and choose input action. Give it a clear name like IA throw. Double click your new input action to open it. The only thing you need to check is the value type. Make sure it's set to digital bool. That just means it works like a button on or off. This should be the default, but it's always good to confirm. Next, go back to the main input folder and find your input mapping context asset, usually called IMC default. Double click to open it up. Here, you'll see all your input mappings like jump, move, and look. Click the plus icon to add a new mapping, then select IA throw from the list. Finally, bind it to the key or button you want. For this example, I'll use the Q key on my keyboard, but you can pick whatever feels right for your setup. That's it. Now our project knows what throw means and what key or button should trigger it. Next, let's make our distraction ball actually sound like it hits the ground. We'll import a sound effect, set it up for 3D audio and get it ready for use in our blueprint. Start by creating a new folder in your content drawer right in the root folder and name it audio. Go into this folder then drag and drop your sound file right into it. I'm using a ball drop sound effect I made myself. You can either generate your own or grab the sample sound from the Google Drive link in the video description. Just keep in mind, Unreal Engine doesn't support MP3 playback natively. You'll need to convert your file to WAV best quality or OGG smaller size similar to MP3. Once your sound is imported, right-click on it and select Create Queue. This will make a sound queue asset, which gives you more control over how your audio works in-game. 
double click the new sound cue to open it. In the left panel, find the attenuation section and enable override attenuation. This makes sure your sound fades in and out realistically in the 3D world based on how close the player or AI is to the source. You can tweak the inner radius, fall off distance and volume settings here if you want. But the main thing is with attenuation on, your distraction will actually feel like it's part of the environment, not just a flat sound playing everywhere. That's it for setting up your audio. Save everything, and we're ready to use this cue in our blueprint logic to actually trigger AI distraction. All right, now that our audio is set up, let's get back to the content drawer and organize our project a bit more. In the root of your content folder, create a new folder and name it Blueprints. Head into the Blueprints folder. Right click and choose blueprint class. For the parent class, pick actor, that's what we want for something we'll be spawning and throwing around the level. Give your new blueprint a clear name, BP Throwable works great, but you can call it BP Ball or whatever fits your style. Double click to open it up. In the next steps, we'll start adding components and setting up all the logic to make this blueprint into an actual throwable sound making distraction object. Let's turn our blueprint into a real throwable object. Open up your BP Throwable Blueprint and let's add the necessary components. First, in the Components panel, click Add and search for Static Mesh. Add that to your blueprint. Now, replace the default scene root by dragging your new Static Mesh component on top of it. This step is important for our blueprint setup. Next, add a projectile movement component. This will handle all the physics and movement when we throw the ball. Now click on the static mesh component you just added. In the details panel, assign it to use the mesh you made earlier, like my sphere. Set the collision presets to block all. This will make sure our ball collides properly with the world. Under physics, disable simulate physics. We want the projectile movement component to handle the movement, not the physics engine. Make sure enable gravity is turned on so our ball actually falls instead of floating away. Now, click on the projectile movement component. Set the initial speed to 1000 and the max speed to 10,000. These are good starting values, but you can always tweak them later for your game's feel. Enable should bounce to give the ball a little realism when it hits surfaces and set the bounciness and friction as needed. The defaults usually work fine. Also, make sure simulation enabled is checked. Finally, disable initial velocity in local space. Leaving this on can cause weird issues where the ball's velocity doesn't match your throw direction, so it's best to keep it off for consistent behavior. That's it for the basic component setup on our BP Throwable. Now, we've got a blueprint that's ready to be spawned, thrown, and interact properly with the environment. Let's finish up our BP Throwable blueprint by wiring up the logic that makes noise when the ball hits something in the world. Start by right-clicking in the event graph and searching for event hit. This is what fires off whenever our ball collides with anything. Next, we want to make sure we don't trigger the noise if the ball somehow hits the player controller. So right click again and add a get player controller node. Then, to check if the other hit actor is not the player, drag off from other, search for not equal, and wire in the player controller node. Now, hold B and left click to quickly add a branch node. Plug the result of your not equal check into the branch's condition. From the true output of the branch, add a do once node. This makes sure the noise and sound only trigger once, preventing spam if the ball bounces multiple times. After that, drag out and add a play sound at location node. For the sound, select your ball drop cue that we set up earlier. For location, use the hit location from the event hit node so it plays exactly where the ball lands. Now right click and add a report noise event node. Set the noise location to the hit location, loudness to 1.0, and set the max range to zero or whatever fits your game's needs. For the tag, type in ball. This makes it clear to the AI what kind of noise was made. Important, wire the player controller from your earlier get player controller node directly into the instigator pin. This helps Unreal know who made the noise, which can be really useful for more advanced AI reactions later. Finally, for some debug feedback, add a print string node. Type something like, we made some noise. And set the color to red so it really stands out when testing. 
That's all we need to do in BP Throwable. Now, when the ball hits anything except the player, it will play a sound, report, a noise event for the AI and give you a visual debug message. Next, we'll set up our character blueprint so we can actually throw this ball in game. Now let's jump into our character blueprint so we can actually throw the ball in game. First, in the components panel, add an arrow component. Set its location to X60, Y50, and Z60. This will be our spawn point for the throwable ball. You can always tweak these values or if you want to get fancy later, you can parent it to your character's hand or another body part. For now, we'll keep it simple. I'm also setting the arrow color to blue just to make it easy to spot in the editor. Next, head over to the event graph. Search for your throw input action event. This is the one we set up earlier, IA throw. Expand the node so we can wire in our logic. To actually spawn the ball, search for spawn actor from class and set the class to your BP throwable. Change the collision handling override to always spawn ignore collisions. This prevents errors if your spawn point is too close to the player or another object. Now drag your arrow component from the components list into the event graph to get a reference. From that, get the world transform and connect it to the spawn transform input on the spawn actor node. This makes sure the ball spawns at the exact position and direction of your arrow. After spawning, drag off the return value and search for get projectile movement. This grabs the projectile movement component of your spawned ball. Then, from there, drag off and search for set velocity. To control the direction and speed of our thrown ball, we need to set its velocity. Here's exactly how you do that. Start by grabbing a get actor forward vector node. This gives you a vector that points directly in front of your character, basically whichever way you're facing. Now drag off the output pin from that node and look for a multiply node. This will multiply that forward direction by a number to control the ball's speed. Here's an important detail. On the multiply node, you'll see separate x, y, and z values. Instead of plugging in another vector, right click on any of those fields like the x input and choose to float single precision. That way you can use a single number to scale the whole vector at once. Type in a value like 2000, that's how fast your ball will fly. If you want a stronger or weaker throw, just change that number. Finally, take the output of that multiply node and plug it into the velocity input on your set velocity node for the projectile. Now every time you throw, the ball will shoot out in the direction your character is facing at the speed you set. This makes it easy to adjust how far or fast your ball goes and you get a really natural feeling throw. That's it. Hit play and test. When you press your throw key, your ball launches out just like you set up. In the next part, we'll work on making sure our enemy AI actually hears this noise and reacts to it. Now it's time to make our enemy actually hear the noise from our thrown ball and react to it. Open up your BP enemy guard blueprint. In the components panel, click on the AI perception component. Over in the details panel, you'll see a section called senses config. Click the plus button to add a new sense and select AI hearing config from the dropdown. Under detection by affiliation, be sure to check both detect neutrals and detect friendlies. This makes sure our enemy can hear sounds from the player, not just other enemies. You can also change the hearing range to control how far away the enemy can hear sounds. Set the max age to five seconds or more. This value controls how long the AI keeps the memory of a noise event. After five seconds, the noise will expire and the enemy will completely forget that the noise happened, even if it was heading toward it. You can use this to make the AI return to patrolling or do something else when it forgets about the distraction. Optionally, you can set the dominant sense to AI sense hearing if you want the enemy to prioritize hearing over sight. That's it for setting up the hearing sense. Now your enemy is actually listening for noise events in the world. Next, we'll improve our event graph logic. Right now, the on-target perception updated event only reacts to seeing the player. We're about to make it react to hearing noise as well, so the enemy can actually investigate distractions. All right, let's wrap up the distraction system by wiring up our event logic so the enemy AI reacts to hearing the ball and properly forgets it after the max age expires. First, inside your BP enemy guard event graph, let's clean up and make some space between the on-target perception updated node and the cast of BP third person character. 
Drag off the stimulus output and add a break AI stimulus node. This lets us access all the details about what the AI sensed. Next, we want to check if the sense event is for our thrown ball. Take the tag pin from break a stimulus, drag off it, and search for an equal node. In the text box, type ball. That matches the tag we used when reporting noise in our BP throwable. And from there, add a not boolean node. This will invert the condition so anything not tagged ball, like site events, passes through as before. Now hold B and click to create a branch node and connect the not output to its condition pin. Wire the true output to your existing cast to BP third person character for site logic. From the false output, add an AI move to node. This handles moving to the noise location. For the AI move to node, set pawn, use a self reference node, this is your enemy. Destination, use the stimulus location from break a stimulus. Now, whenever the AI hears the ball noise, it will move to investigate. Let's also quickly fix the forget logic for noises. Find your on-target perception forgotten event. Remove the cast to BP third person character. You don't need that for noise events. Connect this event directly to your set max walk speed or whatever logic you use to return the enemy to normal patrol. This prevents cast failures when forgetting non-player stimuli like our ball. After you've made all these changes, go back to your level and remove any existing BP enemy guard actors from the scene. Just select and delete them one by one. Then open your content drawer, go to your AI folder and drag a fresh BP enemy guard into the level. This way you're making sure the newest version of your blueprint is being used and you won't run into any issues with cached or outdated logic. And now hit play and test it. When you throw the ball using Q or whatever key you mapped, your enemy will hear the noise, move to investigate, and if it doesn't see the player, forget about the noise after 5 seconds and go back to patrolling. And that's the full distraction and AI hearing setup. If you found this helpful, drop a comment, share what you want to see next, or let's brainstorm some cool mini AI games together for the next parts. I've already got a few great ideas from your feedback in previous videos. See you in the next chapter!